And on his 12th day selling that one product, he actually reached over $1,000 in revenue and it actually ended up selling out. Hey Bashar to here, Amazon FBA seller from beautiful San Diego. If it's your first time to my channel, welcome. Consider subscribing as I drop brand new content about Amazon FBA every single week. Also, if you are returning, thank you very much for coming back. Be sure that you guys are giving this video a thumbs up and drop in the comment sections what more you like to see out of this channel. You see, I often hear people talking about how Amazon is so, you know, saturated now and how there are so many more sellers and it is a lot more difficult to actually make it up on Amazon and actually you need so much more money to sell on Amazon. Now, what I like to say is, look, I've been selling for five years and yes, there are definitely, you know, a lot more sellers than there were five years ago when I first started selling, but you gotta understand, there are also a lot more buyers. Like, for me, from what I've seen is that if there was, let's say, a ratio of one seller to every thousand buyers. Now there is a ratio of one seller to every 5,000 or 10,000 or 20,000 buyers because people, especially with everything that's happening right now, people's shopping habits are simply shifting. You know, like you probably don't go out as much as you used to before, whether if it's because of COVID or not, or, you know, just convenience and because you know, websites like Amazon and other platforms are available for you to do everything from the convenience of your home. Now, before I forget, our weekly uh, giveaway winner for this week is Saeed Hassan. And if you'd like to be the winner for next week's giveaway, drop in the comment section BJKU to enter the chance to win our step-by-step -step PDF on how to launch your first product. And also be sure to tune in for next week's video to see if you won this week's giveaway. So let's jump into this case study and really share with you guys exactly how Clayton was able to succeed and really make it up to, you know, producing about $30,000 a month using just one product and really with having launched about two weeks or so. Now, full disclaimer, Clayton is not completely new to the e-commerce world. He actually has tried retail arbitrage on Amazon a while back, a few years ago, and then he also has been trying dropshipping and eBay dropshipping as well in the last couple of years, but just hasn't exactly cracked the code. And he has been wanting to really do this from my experience that Clayton is a uh, war veteran who is a father of four and also just been wanting to, um, you know, create an income online just to be able to spend more time with his family. So he's been kind of playing around with this whole e-commerce game for a little bit now. However, up until before we met, he didn't exactly have a system. And that's why I always preach to you guys that having an exact step-by-step -step system is very helpful to really get you ahead. So. The following are going to be three takeaways that Clayton was able to really put and implement together that actually helped him scale launch first one product and then scale it to doing over $30,000 a month in the first couple of weeks selling. So the number one thing is product research really and, and having a solid product research method just sets you apart from everyone else. And not just that, but really having an arsenal of product research methods. I hear people talking about, well, I use Blackbox, or I use you know Jungle Scouts, or I go to, to Amazon, or I go to Alibaba, or last week's video, I shared with you guys a technique that actually helps you go to Amazon directly and find out what Amazon suggests for frequently bought together to really come up with ideas for products that you can launch. So really what he did is he employed an arsenal of product research methods that went out there and found them different products, utilizing different methods, and most importantly, playing around with the numbers. You see, just like the speed limit, oftentimes we kind of stick to like, okay, this is my criteria, this is what I'm gonna find. But you see, with the speed limit, if let's say you're driving 65 on a freeway, or the speed limit is 65 on a freeway, you're not always gonna be driving 65. You're kind of gonna be you know, going 70 sometimes, 60 sometimes, 50 sometimes, but the speed limit is just the structure. The same thing is your product research criteria. That's just the structure, but that doesn't mean you stick to it 100%. You need to make sure that you are changing your numbers around a little bit, just so that way you could bring up numbers that other people are not looking at. Just because you've been taught that you should be looking at a product that sells between 18 to 35, that has 100 reviews or less, doesn't mean you stick to it. In fact, Clayton's uh, product does not have 100 reviews or less. You know, about seven of the top 10 have over 150 reviews, but because his differentiation was such 
massive that actually he was able to launch it and still be successful, which takes me to number two. Number two is being different, you know, differentiating his product. He didn't just slap a logo on, he actually created a customized box and he really offered the market something completely new. And that's very important because oftentimes what happens is just because you found a product that has good volume and has low reviews doesn't mean you're going to be successful. You don't want to be a me too product. You want to offer the market something different. That way when a consumer trying to compare your product and someone else's product, it's not an apples to apples comparison. It's more of an apples to oranges because no one else is offering your product. And that's what he did. And the way he did it is number one, utilizing our last week's method, which is looking at frequently buy together but number two and most importantly is reading up on the bad reviews of his competitors and seeing what people are really complaining about when they bought his competitors products he also ordered a few samples of his competitors and to kind of see you know what exactly is it that these products are missing and he was able to implement those changes into his product now the third and most important aspect of this whole thing is how much he sourced his product one thing that i teach very massively and i focus on into our program is that you need to make sure that your landed cost is not more than 25 percent of your sell price and what i mean by this is that if you are going to sell a product for let's say twenty dollars manufacturing plus shipping cannot exceed 25 or five to six dollars uh, landed to amazon's warehouse and the reason for that being is now you have 75 percent or let's say 70 percent of wiggle room that you can utilize for driving traffic to your listing whether if you're running facebook ads which is something he did or if you are running PPC, also to make sure that you know there's enough room for FBA fees. Oftentimes we use the FBA calculator, but then when the product arrives to Amazon, the FBA fee is different. Maybe sometimes it's less, but oftentimes when it's different, it's usually more. So you want to make sure that you have enough room. So that way he was in a position where he was actually able to spend more money on PPC, to give away more products, to spend more, more money on Facebook ads, to be able to really be aggressive when, on his launch. That way he can compete against his competitors. And as I'm saying, actually was a competitive product, but the demand was so massive that he was still able to make it up and profit and reorder and be able to compete and actually get ahead. So with implementing those three things, Clayton was actually able to launch a brand new product on October 1st. By October 12th, he was able to scale his product to over $1,000 a day in revenue and he actually happened to run out. But then just a few days after he restocked, which was about a week later, he literally put everything back together and then literally started as if no interruptions had happened. Now, running out is a bad thing because your ranking can definitely drop. However, if you can you know, plan it ahead of time and have inventory coming in, and that's what Clayton's thing happened with him is that because he sourced his product at 25% cost, he was able to generate enough profit to reinvest back into his product and really order a whole bunch more that now he's producing even more sales. Outside of that, guys, I truly hope that you guys enjoyed the last few minutes that we've been together here and really shed some lights on your quest to really starting this massively profitable Amazon business that it could really be. And as I mentioned, now is really the time to start this business. Now, if you're like Bashar, it sounds great, but I really want someone to guide me through the process and I want you to personally guide me through just like how you guided Clayton and rock me through how to become successful on Amazon. Well. What I've done is I have put together a 25 minute workshop where I actually break down to you the steps on how I personally do, you know, selling on Amazon and then really walk you through all the steps on how to become successful. At the end of the workshop, I give you an option to book a call with one of our advisors where they will answer all of your questions and also just simply see if working together is a good fit. They make an offer. If it's a great fit, great fit. If not, completely okay too. All you have to do is just go ahead and click on the first link in the description and I'll see you inside. Outside of that, thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to check out those couple of videos that I've got here for you for some other tips and tricks about Amazon FBA. Hope to see you soon. I'll see you next week. Have yourselves a great day. Take care.